Hi there, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is your full moon reading. Now, um, of course, right, the full moon is the highest peak of energy output, right? So the moon cycle being one of manifestation, we can kind of see the full moon being a point of clarity, a point of culmination, of fruition in some capacity that regards the intentions that we set. Now, um, the moon cycle can kind of be seen in two ways. One is macro and one is micro. So the micro moon cycle that occurs is monthly, right? Starting with the new moon at the very sort of tail end of the previous month or beginning of this month. For us, it was, uh, for this month, it was, I believe, on the 26th or 27th of March. So um, nonetheless, right, the new moon leading to the full moon, both within about a month's range. So that's one ma that's one micro um, cycle of manifestation. Okay. Then you have though the macro cycle of manifestation, which um, takes place in six month intervals. So, and the way we see that is, um, right, every new moon in a certain sign corresponds to a full moon in the same sign, and they're always going to be six months apart. So, when you think of it in that way, right, you got to think back six months prior to now, what kind of intentions you were um, uh, focusing intently on, right, setting into motion. As it was around that time, right, the, uh, the new moon in Libra, that corresponds with this full moon in Libra. So whatever um, was kind of happening since six months prior to now, you may be seeing is coming to fruition in some capacity um, today. Okay, so let's see. Um, yes, it's a lovely time, a lovely time to take stock, right? To really um, um, assess, right? Take a step back and think, how am I exerting my fire energy? Right? Because the full moon is associated with the fire element. Um, that being right tied to our creative reserves, our self-will. Right? And so fire energy, just like any other element, has a conducive, positive manifestation and one that is maybe not so helpful. Right, Fire being tied to anger, rage. But also to manifestation, right? The spark of life, creativity, inspiration, confidence, courage. So um, it's a beautiful time, right? To take note of how is this energy within myself coming coming out? And we all have fire, right? We all have fire, some of us more so than others, depending on the elements in your chart, um, your astrology chart. But regardless, right? Um, it's, it's, we're all magicians at the end of the day. Right? And the Magician card reminds us of that, that it's that alchemical balance between all of the elements of our being and whatever propensity, right, we have them, right? It's that art of, um, of, um, of working with every sort of um, um, chemical, right, that comprises us to create further. So cycles of manifestation within cycles of manifestation. And again, right, it's taking stock, right, of that fire element that we're working with. How is it, how are we wielding that wand? Um, and so I hope that this reading sheds some light on that for you guys. And um, we will begin with Aries. Hi, Aries. Thank you so much for tuning in here. Let us see what energies are brought forth for you at this culminating point of the Libra full moon. Wow. Okay. Ten of wands right at the apex, horizontally laid. The ace of pentacles in reverse right beneath, um, propped up at the base of that ten of wands. The three of swords somewhat horizontally laid beneath the Ace of Pentacles. So it's interesting, Aries, because you have an end, closure, and beginning, the Ace. So from the Ten to the Ace. Okay, I wanna pull a few more cards for you, Aries. 
a few turned into quite a few <laughs> but hey it comes out the way it it should so let's heed that okay you have oh another start yes the fool in reverse overlaying the daughter of pentacles upright overlaying the three of pentacles in reverse overlaying the son of swords um upright okay and this is just the very top sort of um, the the most prominent, I would say, energy um, that's at uh, the four here. Now, beneath that, you have the world horizontally laid, overlaying, overlaying the two of cups, upright, the wheel of fortune, um, <laughs> upright, the ace of cups in reverse, the daughter of swords, upright. Okay. Now, this stack, this stack, is overlaying the three of swords and the ace of swords that also popped out for you okay upright right at the bottom corner of this stack with the world overlaying that stack with the full stack right yet again overlaying the world so let's tune in here one second aries First and foremost, beginnings, beginnings, beginnings. You pulled out how many? How many? You, you pulled, well, first of all, you pulled the 10 of wands, speaking to culmination, fruition, cycling through, right? Reaching some sort of pinnacle, understanding and how we are contributing to our world. What are we, um, right? How are we exerting our fire energy? Fire, wands, right? How are we manifesting? Is there a situation that is at its wit's end, right? Has it reached its peak, its culmination? of being useful, of being helpful. Do we need a new beginning and where? Right, where? And it's the full moon in Libra, right? Seventh house, partnerships. So it could absolutely be speaking to a matter of love. Absolutely could be speaking to a matter of love. Um, <clears throat> and you pull the two of cups. I just did your February. Uh, I don't know why I said February, but... That may mean something for some of you, right? Something that started in February, maybe, right? Maybe regarding, um, or maybe regarded in the energy of this Two of Cups uh, that I also pulled for you in the reading that I just did for you guys for April, mid-April. So Aries, um, there is, there is, there is some sort of um, evaluation, okay, of partnership, of love, how we see ourselves in relation to another. And... Right, that energy is sort of, it's interesting because you have these two stacks, right? One which is very independent, the fool, speaking to a, the budding of a, a new beginning as it regards your being as an individual. You then have a separate stack which regards um, sort of um, uh, the, the landscape of partnership, okay? And I will say this, okay, you have the Wheel of Fortune, a 10 as well, the 10 of the Major Arcana deck. And it's right, it's preceding this Ace of Cups in reverse. So what I'm feeling is that there is the sensation for you, um, Aries, that there is some sort of beginning on the horizon for you as it regards matters of love, matters of emotional satisfaction. Um, very interesting. Is there, is, there, is there a certain partnership that you feel that you are retreating from, that you feel um, there's a certain situation that will come about, right, rather unexpectedly or perhaps expectedly, that causes you to sort of think, do I want to, do I want to participate in this any longer? Do I, do I uh, feel, right, that it's to the benefit of all, that it is conducive, that it is conducive? Or, right, does it lead to a feeling of chaos? of commotion, of feelings, right? Of communication, not only with others, but also with myself, right? The intuitive dialogue that I, that I share, right? With myself. So is there something that's clouding, clouding your, um, your otherwise clarity of path as an individual, right? And so there's this concept of singlehood, right? Independence and um, and merging, partnering, okay, that I'm feeling you're taking a closer look at. There's something that has been brought to clarity, perhaps, as it regards uh, how, how you view relationships, how you view love. What is love? What is emotional satisfaction and stability as well? And what is the fine dance between those two, to which I don't feel, 
right? Trapped and um, uh, some, somehow bound, right? And at the mercy of, of what other people think and feel, right? How do I detach from that while also, right, um, maintaining the harmony of partnership? So it's this dance. It's this dance between being totally independent and totally, right, on just our own sort of path forward. That's, that's, that's very much of our, of our own um, sort of determination, okay? And that which we feel, right, somehow influenced by the emotional landscape of what we're involved in and the actual physical partnership. So there's this, uh, it's a matter of ideology, I feel, that's coming up for you as it pertains to relationships. That's my dog. <laughs> so if you hear that <laughs> every now and then, <laughs> it's, um, it's bandit. <laughs> All right. So, right. So, cause there's this sort of triangulation of energy between the three of swords, the ace of swords and the two of cups at the very top. So, right. It's like what binds, what binds this, uh, this, this, this energetic discourse for you is, is the matter of a relationship, is the concept of a relationship. How do I view relationships and emotional satisfaction in general? And what do I want, right? And almost feeling torn, right? Torn, like, to speak my truth, to strike out on my own, to wield my own sword, or, right? To remain at the mercy, perhaps of the influence of partnership on me, right? To what end am I influenced by partnership in a way that is, that is, that binds me, right? And holds down um, a sense of independence. So it's that dance, okay? It's that dance that you're, um, that I feel you're learning the moves to. That's what I feel for you, Aries. Um, Right, it's like a hip and a hop. Okay. Now, you also have the Ace of Pentacles, right? Let us not forget. <laughs> you have another Ace, the Ace of Pentacles. You have three Aces, all right? But um, the Ace of Pentacles, right, speaking to a new beginning, underway. Ten of Wands. I feel that absolutely there's a closing of a cycle. Okay, there's a realization that the way I've been doing things, right, my habit patterns, right, even the way I've been exerting myself, fire energy, is in some way cyclical, 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 but where is it bringing me? Where is it taking me? Is it is it fruitful? Or is the foundation of whatever I'm contributing to altogether need to be uprooted in some way and redefined? And again, it could be speaking to an ideology, okay? And even an ideology of what makes me feel secure and stable as it pertains to matters of relationships, and love. Okay. Now, and it doesn't have to always be love with another. Okay. It could just be speaking to, right, that, that uh, reflective space within yourself, right? The relationship that you have with yourself. Um, it could be pertaining to that as well. Okay. But nonetheless, you have the world overlaying the two of cups. What I'm seeing here, Aries, for you is there's this dichotomy, okay, between micro and macro, zooming in and zooming out, right? Singularity and um, and and, and um, collective, okay? Where, who am I as an individual and who am I as a collective being, as part of the collective? Where do I see myself in the world, right? And 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 um, how does the ideologies that I share, right? That I that I take on as it pertains to matters of relationships, as it pertains to my, my, my place as a, um, as a reflection, right, of the place of others. How does that come into play with how I see myself in totality, right, in the world? So it's about self-identity, okay? It's about finding your footing, finding your footing, okay? And gaining a sense of recognition of what contributes to that positively, 
what even am I contributing to? What am I doing, right? That is, that is uh, either contributing to a sense of stability and truth, inner truth, and what perhaps is not. Okay, what is making me feel somewhat perhaps trapped? Now, or simply at the mercy, right, of others. So you have the Fool overlaying, Daughter of Pentacles upright, Three of Pentacles in reverse, Son of Swords. Interesting. You have two birds in this deck, in this mini deck, the Fool and the Son of Swords. So the Fool is pending. <laughs> the Fool is pending. It's at the mercy of um, this process. Daughter of Pentacles, right? A very independent sort of energy. You have a lot of independent energy, a strongly independent energy that's almost speaking to, right, taking control over matters of stability, taking control over building our mountain, right, the mountain that we traverse to, to, um, to seek out what is our dream as an individual. And you've got this concept, you've got this concept strongly in your mid-April reading, okay? So, there's a reconfiguration, okay, that is set into motion by way of this realization that you have of relationships, of your place in partnerships in general, and how you contribute to your emotional satisfaction, okay? Now, the Son of Swords, there's a part of you, there's a part of you, there's a desire to confront, confront all of this energy that, um, that in, in, a, in a way that is forthright, in a way that is forthright, are you okay, baby? <laughs> yeah, a little touch. Hi, Poochie Poochie. Sorry, guys. Um, in a way that is, right, like clear-headed, level-headed, okay, in a way that just like almost pierces through, pierces through this box in a way. It's somewhat of a box. Okay, the Son of Swords is literally flying into this. So, part of you, I feel, knows that that your ideology that, um, that uh, regards, okay, the, the matter of love, and partnership and individuality somehow needs to be spoken out about, refined in some way, clarified, brought to clarity in order to enable this new beginning of, of, of your transformation as an individual. Okay, so Aries, I hope this reading was helpful for you. Have a happy full moon. I will see you guys soon. Um, I will be out of town, so I, I, um, I will hope to get your whoa, May reading out soon. Time is flying. We're almost at May. So, hey, okay. Um, I will, I will be hoping to get those out to you um, in about, I'll say two weeks or so, maybe sooner. Okay, so stay tuned for that and I will see you guys soon. Bye.